I'm Dr. Laura Sel Barnes. Uh, I actually have a dog of my own with epilepsy and I've worked very closely uh, with a neurology specialist over at Southern California Vet Specialist, Dr. Wayne Berry. Uh, we've been through the frustrations of diagnosing epilepsy in my own pet um, and also the different treatment options out there. So um, I'm very current and up to date with my information in terms of treating epilepsy. We have to be very real about this condition. There are multiple anticonvulsants out there on the market um, and you know if you were to come in and tell me that your dog had had one seizure in the last six months and it had never happened before, I probably am not going to start you on those anticonvulsant medications because they are going to make your dog more sleepy and change their attitude and a lot of people don't like that, that change that they see in their pet. Now usually after a week or so the, the medication kind of sets in, they get used to it and they're, and they're fine. My dog in particular is on multiple medications and there's, he's not out of it, he doesn't seem different at all, but every pet is different. So, you know, at that point we're just monitoring and we want you to write down when it happens. Now, seizures become classified as uncontrolled when you're having more than one a month. Um, so as reluctant as you may be to start them on anticonvulsants, um, if your dog is having two or three seizures a month, it is not controlled. And the downside to that is that the more seizures your dog has, the more it's going to have if we don't control them because each seizure lowers the threshold for another one to take place. And we really don't want that because seizures can be very damaging and the brain can overheat and the organs can get very upset. So we really want to try and stop these seizures from happening. Now, the tried and trusted medication, it's the same as, uh, as a human medication originally, is good old phenobarbital. Uh, it's a really great drug. It works really well at controlling seizures. And the thing that's really good about it is that when we start the patient on the medication, it doesn't take very long for it to be in the bloodstream, circulating and working and staying there working. There are other anticonvulsants out there that have less side effects on things like the liver and less drowsiness associated with them. But unfortunately, they can take anywhere between two to four weeks to actually become effective in the bloodstream. So the first port of call is always gonna be the phenobarbital unless they come out with something different um, in the future. And medicine's always changing, so maybe they will. So once your dog is on phenobarbital, um, we have to set up the expectation of how are we gonna monitor this? How do we know it's working? You know, are we at therapeutic doses? And usually the veterinarian will recommend after two to four weeks of being on the phenobarbital, taking a blood test to see where that level's at. If your dog is still having seizures and it's not at the, you know, the level where it's supposed to be, then we're gonna increase that dose. If your dog is not having seizures and it's within the therapeutic range, then we're not gonna change anything. Um, Again, if we're getting to the point where we're having to use really high levels of the phenobarbital to actually control seizures, which did not work in my dog particularly well, um, we're going to then start talking about adding in different options, things like potassium bromide, things like zanisamide, things like Keppra, um, just to name a few. Um, again, those are all anticonvulsants and they all require different things. So potassium bromide is something that takes those good few weeks to get up into the bloodstream. But the nice thing about it is that it allows us to use less of the phenobarbital. So generally, the liver is gonna be less affected with side effects of drugs because we're actually bringing down the levels needed to control the seizures with another drug. Um, I tried zanisamide. Um, that was a twice a day medication. Uh, I didn't find that it did anything for Dougal, but I know that it's very effective for other dogs that suffer with seizures. And that's something you can talk to neurologists or general practitioners that are very familiar with seizures and anticonvulsants about. Um, Kepra is another one. Um, it's generic now, which is nice because it was a costly medication. But again, compliance is difficult with that one because that only lasts for eight hours in the system. So you're giving it every three hours. Um, and that can be really tricky. So we have to understand with epilepsy that, um, especially in my dog's case, um, I consider, when I first adopted him, he was having anywhere between four and 13 seizures in a day. Um, I was very emotionally distressing for me and my husband, even though I'm a veterinarian and I know about seizures, it's still very hard at four in the morning when you're tired and your dog is seizing and seizing and seizing. And at that point we call it cluster seizures. And I just thought, you know, we, we've got to figure out how to stop this. And this is when we consulted with Dr. Berry about extra medications we could add in. And so we've been through all the medications and right now we're to the point where 
We'd gotten him to one, two, three seizures every kind of three weeks. Um, and now he's on Just Food for Dogs. We're looking at maybe having seizures every five to six weeks. Um, usually just one, sometimes there's two. Um, and now, sometimes it's not even a full on grand mal seizure. Now, sometimes it's just a little bit of involuntary body movements that he'll go through. My husband and I identify that as, you know, the lead up to a seizure or even a, a kind of milder version of a seizure that he would usually have. And so, you know, in the beginning, I was gun ho about we're going to cure these seizures and he's never going to have any. I'm a veterinarian and I can take care of it. But in the real world, that isn't always possible. And you know, if you have a dog that responds to medications and you remove the triggers if you've identified any and you've got them on good nutrition, great, that's the best news ever. But you're not always gonna be able to make it so that they're not having seizures all the time. Um, we really just wanna get good control and the less seizures, the better.